Welcome to the Managing Change series from Speak It. Today we have with us Ms. Lisa J. Crawford. She's the CEO of LJC Motivations, through which she reaches millions around the world with her messages of hope, comfort and inspiration. She holds more than 20 years experience as a motivational speaker, life coach and non-fiction author and has been a hospitality consultant for over two decades. Welcome Lisa, such a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. So how are things at your end? I'm social distancing and I'm an extrovert, so it's hard. I can imagine. <laughs> it's so hard. But we, we've been lucky the way that we've been, you know, getting to hear people like you in these times, when otherwise yes. busy schedules don't permit it. So that's been one silver lining. It's a beautiful thing, technology. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so first uh, question that we have for you, Lisa, is that Globally, businesses have suffered and sales have gone down. So what type of businesses do you feel have been the most affected in terms of total sales made? Um, I believe the hospitality field, uh, restaurants, hotels, air travel has been hammered. I mean, it has been hammered. So many of my friends and co-workers have lost their jobs. I've had friends or general managers that had to release the entire sales team and, and service staff. And it's very sad because a lot of these people, they don't have plan B. That's they just don't really have it. Seriously. It's going to take a while for businesses to pick up and go really back to where they were. Sure. But during this time, you know, I was thinking about how we could, the hospitality industry, we know Hilton is not going to just fold. We know a lot of these big chains are just not going to fold restaurants. Travel has to get going. So I think that right now the best thing they can do is just stay top of mind. True, true that. So that gets us to the next question. Given the times of crisis, what should be the sales strategy of small businesses, startups, whose existence is under threat right now? So, so the small businesses, um, it depends on how they plan along the way. This is the thing, and I've learned this myself. Being your own business, you know, a business owner, if you're a mom and pop, you gotta always be thinking about what if something like this happens. You know, and a lot of people, they just trying to get through month to month, paying those bills and paying employees and keeping product. So from this, what I'm hoping small businesses learn is to keep this in mind that this could happen to us again i don't think that this i hate that this is happening so many people have lost their lives but this is a wake-up call to the earth if you it is because we got to think outside the box now i have thought about pulled out ideas that i've had for years laying in my brain and now i'm working on them and getting them done so we have to be strategic in how we think now because the old way will never be our way again. Absolutely. It definitely might not be. Also, the big businesses who don't essentially risk shutting down but just need to take that sales number to equilibrium, what should be the strategy that they apply? So, I'm a contractor for a hotel, so I travel all over the different hotels and help them as task force and staff support. So I have one hotel that I just absolutely adore. Well, no, I adored all of them. I can't even say that. <laughs> but I've been at this one for the longest, and it was in Baltimore. And so what I do, even though I'm not getting a dime, what I do for them is I still make posts on the website that will keep people thinking, oh, you know, they're going to come back. They're going to come back. So my biggest thing at that property was weddings. So what I like to do, if I see something cute, I'll just share it on their page about hairstyles and cake favors and cakes and favors and things like that. And people are still looking because honestly, people know that this is just not going to stay like this. So they're still looking. It's amazing how many people are still looking at that page and planning their wedding. So we just have to, big business just has to stay up here. Don't get caught up in it. If you have any money where you can do something community-wise, and this is not saying because I did something, I want praise for it, 
But if you have any resources, it'd be nice to show the humanitarian side of themselves and reach out to the little people. Because it's not about your numbers now. It doesn't matter now if you're a big corporation, a small corporation, black, white, any, whatever. We all one people right now. Absolutely. And nothing like a crisis to show us that. I, you know, it, and we have to look at it like that. This is not to hurt us, it's to help us. Truly, truly. So Lisa, as for you, how difficult or easy is it selling a service? During these times, we are we selling goods. Selling goods, right? <laughs> I don't know. Like service, like this, what we're doing right here. What I'm noticing is more services are needed right now. We need goods, but nobody's going out and buying a TV right now. They're buying toilet paper, Clorox, and Clorox wipes. But these services where we can encourage the soul and uplift the heart, that's what's doing it right now. I've even bought a package since I've been out of work. And when I tell you I've been out of work, I've been out of work for 30 days. And being a contractor, I was not prepared. <laughs> I was not prepared. So um, I did buy a class on, I think, what did I, I bought a class and it was a spirituality class that I bought. It was to teach you how to do your <laughs> chakra systems or something, but it was a service, you know? That's a service to me because Right now, I want to know how to help people from a business and a standpoint, but also from a soul standpoint, because business is going to come back. But people, I don't want people to come out of this thing the same way they went into it. You know, we was living haphazard, you know, going on vacations and not putting money in the bank and all this stuff. And some people are just like devastated what I'm going to do type stuff. And so my goal is if I can do it one person at a time or on a platform like this, I want them to know that they have so much greatness on the inside of them and that the way we were born and designed, there is a divine purpose on the inside that they just got to tap into and they will see that their income truly comes from within. The job just helps pull it, pay for it. But there, there's greatness inside of us. And I want people to feel that knowing that when they're able to get their products going again, they'll have a different mindset. You know, the service industry is a harsh industry because people are so rude. I, I mean, working in hospitality, I had a man, a grown man just, and this was like last month, stand up like he, I was just asking him, did he need help? And he jumped on me and because of who I am, he told me, he said, you need to go back there and fix that suit. You need to do it. He talked to me like I was nothing. His verbal attack on me, he may as well hit me in the face. But I'm telling you something. He, I'm thankful that I am a professional. Oh <laughs> I'm a professional. <laughs> and so I was able to pull myself out of that because his frustration was not with me. It was with the situation. And so that change of mindset, we're going to, I'm hoping and praying that people that come into hotels and restaurants, they realize they're no different. As of today, they are no different than the person that brings them their food. Not <laughs> one drop. No matter how many commas they got in the bank, they can't spend a thing. They at home just like us. Exactly. Exactly. This has been such a great level of, oh God. <laughs> It's been interesting. <laughs> yes, so far very interesting. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, do you think that during these tough times, we should embrace the idea of selling yourself first, then selling your product? I do, because people buy you; they don't buy things. You know, when you're in my, and I'm sorry, I have to go back to my industry. There are a billion hotels in, in Baltimore. It's a hotel or two on every block downtown. So you have to sell you because everybody got the same thing. They got to believe in the fact that you're going to be with them and that you're going to help them through this process. And you got to have the stories and you got to tell the, tell the stories and you Really, I'm not a fake person because if I honestly see that it's not going to fit for them financially or their vision is city and my hotel is historic, I'm not going to have them come there because they're not going to be happy. 
And if people sell themselves, and if they're good people, and they sell from their heart and not from their mind, then it's important to sell you. You are the brand. You know, when I was in um, another hotel, I used to introduce myself. Hello, my name is Lisa Crawford. I'm with Chattanooga. I said that so much. It was almost like Lisa Crawford didn't exist, but the hotel was a thing. But I've changed that. And now I am Lisa J. Crawford and I work for, you know, or I am a part of this organization. So it, it's just different. So it's not really about that product. It's about you and how you make that person feel because people are emotional. And you make an emotional connection. They don't care. They'll make it work just so they could be where you are. True, true. Absolutely. I think that's the best connection. That's the best kind of connection you can make. And people remember you and hence your product. Right. So, Absolutely. I, I call myself a master relationship build. I wrote a book about it too. <laughs> but wow. I am. I, I, I'm a relationship builder. It's a it's a gift. I see the good in people before I even think anything because that's all I know is what you show me, that's who you are. And I try to work with that and work with that until you show me different. Wow. That's an amazing quality you have, seriously. <laughs> Thank you. So Lisa, what advice would you like to give the business development teams to get through these times? So right now, while we're down, we need to look at um, the things that we were slacking in. You know, what things were not bringing in revenue? Because we got time to look at it now. <laughs> what things were not bringing in revenue? If Is it something that we need to keep in the business? You know, or is it something that we can enhance to make it better? to make the numbers go up, to make it sell, be more valuable to the people. Right now is the time to really step back and look at the lows. What, what wasn't working? What times was it not working? When were things the highest? What can we do to escalate that? If, if we're selling a bunch of weddings or if we sell a particular seafood boil at a restaurant or something like that, what time did that happen? How can we escalate it, add to it to make it better, to make more people come? And it's really all about branding. We have to be social media right now. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I have been asked to do lives. Do a live. Do a live. I never want to do a live, but I do them when I do these right here. So what's my problem? <laughs> so we have to just figure out what it is about us that slows, that we sabotage. Even in business, people do it personally, but in businesses, what are we sabotaging? What are we leaving on the table that we need to deal with? You know, and so, and that one thing could take the numbers up, can take your people up, can take the brand up. So it's now about a thinking outside of the box situation and really paying attention to what was going on when we were in our high road, you know? Cause right now the doors is locked. So we can, we got to figure out what we're going to do. When we open up, when every business opened up, they should have a new mindset. Things should not be business as usual. It should be soulfully moving forward. So what's your secret me. of uh, staying positive, Lisa? So, you know, during these times when mostly people are home, how do you stay so positive? I have to get outside. <laughs> I have to, if the sun is shining, I don't care if I walk in this little neighborhood or what. I found a creek, I love water. Um, so I found a little creek, it's just a little creek, but when it rains so much here, it has these big little waves and I just stand there and I listen. And it's the simple things that make me happy. This just holds, oh, it just does everything for me because I want to be able to give some of myself to other people. And so for me to stay sane <laughs> during this time where I can't go to a chamber function, I can't go see my editor, I can't do anything, I just try to make sure I remember who I am. And that's a lot of problems too in business and leadership. People don't know who they are. So they treat people, they don't treat people how they want to be treated, they treat people how they think they should be treated per their title and position. I don't like that. So <laughs> anyway, so I write a lot and I just pay attention to a lot of things that I'm like, you know, I don't want to live my life like that. I want to be a better version of me every day. Even stuck in this house with my grandkids, excuse me, it's not stuck in this house. 
blessed to be in a home with a roof and lights and food. <laughs> in a house with my grandchildren and my daughter. Thank God for her because she has been the one to take me in. Uh, being a contractor, you know, I don't have to have a house because I stay in hotels all year long. So I'm thankful for that. So it's a gratitude situation. You got to be thankful for the small thing. Now my daughter, she cook every day. She's young. She's a good mom. So I really, really, my positive attitude comes a lot in watching her and how she moves. I listen to my son, how he moves. So you got to find those little things to stay proud because there's some stuff in there to be thankful for. Absolutely. Rightly said, Lisa. So thank you so much for being here with us and sharing your thoughts.